friends, what's going on? It is Thursday, August 15th, 2019, 8.21 p.m. And we're taking a quick look at the U.S. and some of the severe weather going on. In fact, in the past five hours, if we take a look at a site called, where is it? Tornado HQ. We use this site a lot, or we did in the past. In the past five hours, we have had a tornado capable, well, a storm capable of producing a tornado in Bedford, PA, not too far from me, and then two more after that in New York. And that is why I opened it with showing you this page here, because you can see this weather that has just moved into PA in New York. I also have our COD chart pulled up so we can look at it in real time and how it formed. Uh, you can kind to see how there was really nothing there at one point and then when the, once that moisture hit the warm air boom everything explodes and we get these um these extreme storms that happen we're also dealing with something going on in nebraska we have some severe warnings going on there and also south dakota had a tornado warning. I'm not sure if it was a touchdown or not, but we have a lot of sporadic weather going on, and it's all coming from these low-pressure systems coming from the west. They end up coming in this way. They look like they're all scattered apart, and then, boom, they meet in the middle, and I could show you that by backing up. We've seen this almost on a daily basis now. These things look like comets. They come in from the upper west or the midwest or the in sometimes the southwest by the Baja region of California. Sometimes they'll drop straight out of the north part of, of uh, um, Canada right over top of the Dakotas around this area, Minnesota. But one way or another, we always end up seeing this, this type of blob shape where everything comes together. I call this area ground zero. I've said it a million times, but it is what it is, guys. Once these these systems start meeting up and, and expanding and coming together, it almost looks like I had a little fur coming off of it. It's just very interesting anomalies. I've taken many pictures of these. In fact, I'm going to take a live picture right there just so I could save that one. I have so many of these where you have these distinct little furry lines coming off of them. It just looks so incredible. It's very odd. But it always comes across as this giant ball. And then as it passes the threshold of Iowa and uh, states like that, like right in this area here as it approaches uh, western Tennessee and Kentucky, it starts to break apart. But this tail end of the storm dipped into Nebraska, and it's causing some pretty major issues there. So we're going to keep an eye on that as well as uh, we have reached frame 200 we can't go much past here uh, also the central part of florida or i should say more towards the north central part of florida clearly the panhandle right here but right across this area here is getting hit pretty hard um and that is all due to um our Gulf moisture and Gulf situation storms going on there. Now, as far as the Gulf goes, we do have some stuff to talk about coming in the next two weeks. Um, could come, might not come. We're still going to talk about it, though. Now, really quick, I want you guys to take a look at our Tropical Intensity Index. This shows areas that are prominent or ready to produce or, um, uh, I guess, uh, keep alive uh, cyclones. So basically anything you see in red is cyclone territory. So if the right moisture, the right storms cling together, we get the right type of, of uh, connection with those storms and the upflow of warm air. Any of these areas is basically a trail right to uh, wherever landmass is next. So you can see uh, from the west part of Africa here, we have a nice trail running all the way through basically the southern area of the Bahamas, just above uh, Haiti and Puerto Rico. Uh, Puerto Rico being over here, Dominican Republic, then Haiti, and then Cuba. And then check out the Gulf, guys. Anything that gets into the Gulf is going to be at risk of becoming a cyclone, depending on how long it can stay in there. And then, of course, the uh, southern area by Mexico and uh, Nicaragua, Madagascar, those areas are... Uh, um, always in the red here. We always see this in the red, and we could show this on Ventu Sky that we do have some storms prepared to come out of this area. But there is a storm that I want to show you guys that has the potential of riding right up in this area. We're not making any uh, uh, set in stone predictions. We're going to show you what the data is showing right now. So for those of you that claim that I'm always wrong or this or that, all I'm doing is showing you the data that's available to anyone in the public whatsoever. You go to these websites, you can see it with your own eyes, and it's, it's what it's currently showing. And when it comes to weather, you've got to do this almost on a daily basis to show the changes. 
Really quick, once again, I just want you to take a look at this little system that came in and then dips into Nebraska here. I have one more chart to show you as that happened and the situation going on in Florida. If you look here, the yellow here is tornado warnings, so or tornado watches, rather. And you could see that all in Nebraska here. And I also brought up radar scope to show you some of this. Now, these are the storms that are going on in New York and Pennsylvania currently. I'm currently getting hit with a storm as we speak, but these were the areas where those tornado warnings were um, in New York, one in Bradford, I believe. But these storms are going in all certain directions. You can see this storm here is moving clearly west to east, west to east, west to east. And then we have a south to like a, it's almost a northeast direction. And then this one almost goes northwest. So we have a lot of different winds going on here. And in my opinion, that's what's causing um, the, uh, the, vor the velocity to show up and the tornadoes to then show up because conditions are right. Um, even though it's a bit cooler out, it doesn't mean there's not going to be tornadoes. So we got to keep an eye on the northeast as we are watching all this together. And for those of you that don't know, if you want to click on one of these areas in this website here, this is weather.gov. It comes to um, any county you want to go to, and you can see how we have uh, Lawrence here, Topeka, um, Amarea. Uh, we have Manhattan uh, within uh, Nebraska. Now, all these areas are within tornado watches. you got to look at the color, match the color. The purple here means severe thunderstorm watches. So we have some, we have severe thunderstorm watches in front of these tornado warnings. The orange being severe thunderstorms of warnings. Those are, um, are what pop, are what are popping up. I'm sorry, guys, right here in this area. So you can see how this chart matches directly with these two marks right here. So you can see how these charts are fairly accurate. You can kind of see where the, the, um, the main source of the severe weather is. Now, it could be a matter of moments be before we see a red block pop up here that would regard us and put us in the area of a tornado watch, which we don't want, or a tornado warning. And that's exactly what happened up here in New York. So uh, with that said, with the U.S., I want to take a look at this possible um, Atlantic hurricane we could be seeing in the very near future. And by very near future, I mean in the next uh, 10 to 12 days, possibly. So here we go. Oh, boy. And really quick, guys, we just had a 4.2 magnitude earthquake um, in Montana, 9.7 uh, right by Yellowstone, guys. We all know about Yellowstone and its volcanoes. Um, but this is a 9.7 kilometer in depth, so about six miles deep. Um, this is in Manhattan, Montana. Now think about that. We just had tornado warnings in New York, and now we've just had a 4.2 magnitude uh, uh, earthquake in uh, Manhattan, Montana. That is the second this week that we've had in Manhattan alone. Um, actually, second today. Uh, it shows right here. So we had a 3.3 in Manhattan, Montana also. So uh, just a little quick earthquake update for you. But as far as the uh, hurricanes go, as you can see here, nothing in the next five days. When we get to the Pacific side, we can see we have two possible invests. This one actually shows up. This one does not show up. Um, and I'll show you that right here on Tropical Tidbits. But here we go. Check out the date, August 31st. We're about two weeks away from that date. And it shows a little bit of something coming up from the west side of the uh, African continent. And then it rides all along above Puerto Rico, uh, Dominican Republic, and Haiti. And above the islands of Bermuda. And then comes straight into this pocket. Now, we do have plenty of time for change so um, for those of you that say that, you know, anything after five days um, is a coin toss, you're absolutely right. I'm saying it right now. I'm not saying at all that this is going to happen the way it shows. We all know that that can change in a heartbeat. But uh, just to show you the movement a little bit, you can kind of see where it's coming from and how quickly it develops. We don't really see much development until it's basically bordered with the Bahamas right here. And that's uh, by the 29th. So plenty of room for change here. But it's the first of these kind that we've seen in a while. And in fact, not just 24 hours ago, they had a system moving into the Gulf and then coming up right around this area after skimming uh, the coast of Mexico, possibly becoming a tropical depression. So basically, it's a wait and see game when it comes to that stuff but um, I'm very interested in this uh, new earthquake here in uh, Montana this 4.2 that is pretty significant so we're gonna uh, look into that we'll get the coordinates we'll uh, maybe even do a separate video on it in fact let's just check it out right now 
uh, while we can. All right, and we got it punched in now, so we'll take a look at exactly where this took place. And, oh, yeah, we're right by Yellowstone. So this was a 4.3. It has now been downgraded to a 4.2. We could see it's here and definitely an irrigation area, uh, farming, cropping, you name it. It's got all sorts of stuff around it. Um, seems to be in, a, yep, there's Manhattan right there. Just so you guys know, this is not being confused with New York's Manhattan. This is Manhattan, uh, Montana. Which, uh, like I said, is often confused with Manhattan, New York. So, uh, just to give you an idea of how close to Manhattan uh, this earthquake took place and the 3.3. In fact, uh, we'll check out exactly where that 3.3 was as well as it was back-to-back -back earthquakes, believe it or not. So, we had the 3.3 and then we had right on top of it, basically... The 4.2, so uh, uh, roughly within the same area of, as each other. Certainly, uh, just just across the street, basically across one highway, and uh, we've we've got some action here um, just outside Manhattan of uh, Montana. There, so uh, that's what I got for you for now, guys. Uh, that tornado scare was pretty rough up here. We just went through that, so uh, that's why I wasn't on a little earlier. Uh, we do have our typical uh, swarm going on in Southern California still. Uh, very hot going. Uh, it's still very hot there. It's always hot there. Uh, we're going to have a lot to talk about in the coming days as far as the system moving into the west here. And then we got some quake stuff to talk about in the coming future. So, uh, But that's what I got for you for this update, guys. I hope everyone is doing good. And again, remember with that um, county by county site, if you ever want to go to this site, weather.gov, you could simply click any one of these boxes and get details on your specific county or you can click a region and it'll bring you the entire region of the area. There's Manhattan right there. Basically, this is where that earthquake just took place. So um, there you have it. Uh, that's what I got for you for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching and we'll be back soon and it'll be a lot sooner than five days. I apologize for that too. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye, guys.